Welcome back to another episode of Weather or Not. I'm your host, Caitlin Bell, here with our forecaster, Austin Long. Now, Austin, this week has looked pretty good so far, but can you give us some insight into the weekend? We've had a pretty good week, but I think our weekend might have a little bit of rain in store, but overall, I don't think it's going to be a bad one. All right, thank you. We'll hear from Austin a little bit later in the forecast, but for now, here is Nature in the News. An asteroid approximately the size of two football fields is set to make a close approach to Earth this month. Asteroid 2024-ON will pass around 620,000 miles away from our planet on September 15th. This distance may seem far, but it's actually close in astronomical terms. It's equivalent to 2.6 times the distance between the Earth and the Moon. A similar close approach happens on average once every 10 years, and this flyby offers good data for astronomers, including data on composition, velocity, rotation period, and orbital path. This information is vital for making models of near-Earth objects better. Not all asteroids are the same size and shape, and they can form in different locations at different distances from the Sun and Earth. NASA tracks near-Earth objects and maintains a database of their trajectories. Asteroids larger than 492 feet in diameter and closer than 4.6 million miles are considered potentially hazardous asteroids. Even with all this, asteroid 2024-ON poses no threat to the Earth. Using the data collected off of this asteroid passing along with others to come, NASA is developing asteroid deflection technologies to help protect the Earth. The brightest stellar explosions known to mankind have been described before. However, superluminous supernovas are 10 to 100 times brighter than a regular supernova. Scientists do know that they are powered by a supercharged cocoon of energy that releases a vast amount of radiation, but their origin mostly remains a mystery. These special supernovas are rare. However, theories suggest that the supernova blast occurred due to the deaths of stars 40 times larger than the sun. A black hole formed at the core uses surrounding material to create a rotating disk. Magnetic fields swirl gas around the black hole and send it out as jets. Two astrophysicists have created computer simulations and mathematical models to follow these jets and study the impact on the star. The pair concluded that a small cavity inside the star forms and the cocoon expands outwards, picking up material along the edges. Researchers suggest that supernovas shine for days, even weeks, until finally losing energy, resulting in the destruction of the star. Last year was the hottest on record, and 2024 is looking to be even worse. Scorching temperatures damage crops, strain electricity, create water shortages, and trigger heat stress along with mass mortality, killing close to half a million people each year. Scientists are trying to combat the warming world by creating ways to cool cities and use less electricity. These advances range from high-efficiency air conditioners to special materials used to keep surfaces colder than their surroundings. Most air conditioners and refrigerators require fluid to be compressed to keep the inside cold. This process requires a lot of energy and results in the emission of greenhouse gases. Researchers are working to reduce the amount of energy that air conditioners consume. One solution is called electrocaloric cooling, which uses an electric field to change the position and vibrations of atoms within an insulating material instead of compression. Supercool materials are also having a rise in popularity due to how powerful they really are. These materials reflect sunlight and emit that radiation back as heat, all without the use of electricity. Researchers are optimistic with the data they are collecting, but say it will take some time to roll out these cool innovations. More than half of the world's population is without clean, accessible water, which is raising questions about the basic health data around the globe. Since 2015, the United Nations has been keeping an eye on access to safely managed water. Before, only reports of weather, global sources were protected from outside contamination, such as wells and rainwater collection systems were used. The Joint Monitoring Program for Water Supply, Sanitation, and Hygiene estimated that over 2 billion people were still without access in 2020. Data from national censuses, reports from regulatory agencies and service providers, as well as household surveys were used. The JMP studied three of the four criteria in each location to represent the overall quality. A method by Esther Greenwood, a researcher at the Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Science and Technology, assessed differently. Greenwood used responses from households across 27 low- and middle-income countries, resulting in an estimated 4.4 billion people. A machine learning algorithm was equipped with global geospatial data to come to this conclusion. Almost half of the 4.4 billion live in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. Despite which method is most accurate, the need for clean water is longing to be fulfilled.
We had a pretty good week so far, a little bit of sun and some below average temperatures really beginning to feel like fall as we head into September here. We're gonna start out Friday though, sunny here in State College, but this low over Canada with a cold front extending over the Ohio Valley is gonna begin our rain chances on Friday night into Saturday. Clouds behind it, sunny conditions here, but take a notice here at this low pressure system in the Atlantic, it's gonna stall out our low that's situated over Canada, leaving that cold front to go straight through Pennsylvania. Rainy Saturday as we begin our first home game, Penn State here. It's gonna be a wet one though, but notice behind the cold front, we have some sunny conditions and that's gonna make our Sunday very pleasant. Cool though, a little below average. By little, I mean 10 degrees below average at that. High pressure is gonna dominate the region situated over Indiana and Ohio leaving us with maybe a stray cloud or two, but for that fact, mainly sunny. Again, cool should start to feel like fall here in September. So 78 on Friday, warmer actually, a beautiful day to be out and about, partly sunny skies at that. 59 overnight, clouds entering the region. That's gonna set up our Saturday to be a bit of a rainy one. I'm not gonna rule out a chance thunderstorm though. If we can get enough energy and activity throughout the beginning of the day to heat up the atmosphere. We could see a pop-up thunderstorm uh, across central Pennsylvania as that front moves through. Overall, we're gonna be cloudy and rainy, and again, slightly below average in the temperature department. 46, that's even worse on the average side, very below average low. Chance shower again as they move through the region, we will be left with a remnant shower to Saturday night. Sunday though, Looks to be a very sunny day and slightly cloudy, but again, 66 is our high. That's 10 degrees below average for that day. Cool and sunny, beginning to feel like fall here in Penn State, and I'm not gonna complain about that. I absolutely love it to pieces. Up next is a feature, dual feature by Brendan Pham and Matthew Howard on increasing precipitation and urban trees. Cities are known as concrete jungles to some, but hidden within the sea of gray, you'll often find some green. As trees bloom among the streetscape, their leaves not only help filter out the sun's rays, but they also have hidden superpowers that help us even when the sun isn't shining. Urban trees have played a significant role in reducing many human cost effects from industrialization such as air pollution and carbon dioxide. The amount of air pollution absorbed by trees is most noticeable outside of the Great Plains where trees are most abundant. The top three most populous cities in the United States, New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago, all fall within the top 10 cities contributing to the global carbon footprint. However, the urban trees planted in these cities have helped absorb about 1 million tons of carbon dioxide each year. Pollution isn't the only problem urban trees can help with. Storm runoff is a major issue in many cities. Tree cover in an urban landscape helps slow down rain at the surface. The soil and roots under each tree help the rainwater filter through the ground instead of running off the sidewalks and roads. Concrete and asphalt are non-porous, meaning they don't allow any water to seep through them. Storm runoff has caused catastrophic flooding events. In 2017, Hurricane Harvey poured up to 60 inches of rain in parts of Texas. Although flooding is likely to occur with such a sheer volume of water, urbanization exacerbates this problem by leaving no place for the water to drain except into storm drains. This is where urban trees can come back into play to absorb the heavy rainfall that occurs in cities. Overall, urban trees have played a large role in cities by capturing carbon dioxide, alleviating runoff, and providing relief from the blistering sun that shines down on us. As urbanization becomes more prominent with time, urban trees will play an even larger role in benefiting us with their natural features. From the roots to the tree canopy, urban trees can provide a great service to us, rain or shine. For whether or not, I'm Brendan Pham. Precipitation has increased dramatically over the past several decades, according to Climate Central. The data was collected from 247 weather stations across the country, showing increasing precipitation, especially east of the Rocky Mountains. These increases happen as temperatures rise across the planet, allowing for extra evaporation. Warmer air holds more moisture in the atmosphere, enhancing precipitation. Average temperatures are rising dramatically across the United States, warming just over a third of a degree Fahrenheit per decade since 1982. Science has proven that this is due to increasing carbon emissions caused by the burning of fossil fuels. If temperatures rise by one degree Fahrenheit, the air can hold 4% more moisture. With higher moisture in the atmosphere, precipitation events become more intense. Extreme instances such as Hurricane Harvey in 2017 
brought up to 60 inches of rain in parts of Texas, the most rainfall ever reported from a tropical cyclone in the United States. With high precipitation events occurring even in Pennsylvania, this can lead to extreme flooding. For example, Pittsburgh reported just over 7.5 inches of rain in the first 15 days of this April alone. This resulted in flooding roads, property damage, and water rescues. As flooding waters are very dangerous, it is the second deadliest weather hazard in the country, killing an average of 100 people each year. Precipitation events are expected to be more frequent and heavier as our climate continues to change. Stay tuned to the National Weather Service alerts and keep your umbrellas, raincoats, and winter gear handy as weather days may be in your future. Well, whether or not, I'm student meteorologist Matthew Howard. So we had a pretty good week. Our weekend, not too bad. A little rain on Saturday. It's not going to hurt anybody. Sunday, very good outlook right now. Our extended, though, in the next week, that's looking even more promising. Let's recap the weekend re real quick. Good start on Friday. 78 is our high. A little warm, a little above average. Those clouds move in Friday night. We're left with rain on Saturday, unfortunately. 72 as our high. But take a look at this low on Saturday. 46. That's some jacket-type weather. Fall is heading our way on Sunday, too. 66 as our high, uh, sunny conditions with some clouds, uh, mix of sun and clouds. 46 again as our low, both the high and the low Saturday and Sunday. All of those values are 10 degrees below average for this time of year. Unlike the, the, the low average temperatures, next week though, we're going to head above average again. This green line is our average line sitting at 75 right now. You can see these bars are beginning to overextend that Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, all looking to be above average right now with abundant sunshine again throughout next week as well. Now, Thursday and Friday, I have those cloud icons there. A chance for a small shower. Can't roll that out right now as we look at the models, but we will see if any uncertainty uh, cranks its way out um, throughout the week. We'll see if that actually develops or not. Overall, very pleasant, looking to be another great sunny week ahead of us. And Caitlin, those showers remind me of our weather whiz question of the day today. Thank you, Austin. Yes. For this week's quiz, we would like to know how much precipitation did State College receive this August? Was it A, 4.19 inches, B, 5.76 inches, C, 6.93 inches, or D, 7.34 inches? If you said C, you would be correct. Now, Austin, that actually makes it our 10th wettest August on record when our average is usually 3.62. That's a pretty wet August, I'd say, and I kind of remember Tropical Storm uh, Debbie making its way up into our neck of the woods. That's probably what dumped most of the rain for that month there, and actually there's a small disturbance in the Atlantic, as I said in my forecast, that um, is helping to keep Saturday. Our first Penn State home game here, uh, a little rainy, unfortunately, so I don't think I'm personally going to go to the game. I think I will watch it in my in my apartment and stay dry. Um, how about you? Yes, I agree. I don't think I'll go. I will have to see if the weather holds off. We'll have to see. We'll play it by year then. Yes. Thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Weather or Not. Be sure to watch our brand new episode next week.